In mathematics, a CR manifold is a differentiable manifold together with a geometric structure modeled on that of a real hypersurface in a complex vector space, or more generally modeled on an edge of a wedge. Formally, a CR manifold is a differentiable manifold M together with a preferred complex distribution L, or in other words a subbundle of the complexified tangent bundle CTM equals trademark C such that the bundle L is called a CR structure on the manifold M. The abbreviation CER stands for Cauchy Riemann or complex real. Introduction and motivation. The notion of a CR structure attempts to describe intrinsically the property of being a hypersurface in complex space by studying the properties of holomorphic vector fields which are tangent to the hypersurface. Suppose for instance that M is the hypersurface of C2 given by the equation where Z and W are the usual complex coordinates on C2. The holomorphic tangent bundle of C2 consists of all linear combinations of the vectors. The distribution L on M consists of all combinations of these vectors which are tangent to M. The tangent vectors must annihilate the defining equation for M, so L consists of complex scalar multiples of in particular. L consists of the holomorphic vector fields which annihilate F. Note that L gives a CR structure on M for L, L equals 0 and since Z and W are linearly independent of their complex conjugates. More generally, suppose that M is a real hypersurface in Cn, with defining equation F equals 0. Then the CR structure or L consists of those linear combinations of the basic holomorphic vectors on Cn, which annihilate the defining function. In this case, for the same reason as before. Moreover, L, L, L since the commutator of holomorphic vector fields annihilating F is again a holomorphic vector field annihilating F. Embedded in abstract CR manifolds there is a sharp contrast between the theories of embedded CR manifolds and abstract CR manifolds. Many of the formal geometrical features are similar. These include a notion of convexity, a differential operator analogous to the Dolbo operator, and an associated cohomology. Embedded CR manifolds possess some additional structure, though, a Newman and Dirichlet problem for the Cauchy Riemann equations. This article first treats the geometry of embedded CR manifolds, shows how to define these structures intrinsically, and then generalizes these to the abstract setting. Embedded CR manifolds. Preliminaries embedded CR manifolds are, first and foremost, sub-manifolds of CN. Define a pair of subbundles of the complexified tangent bundle CTC, N by TCN consists of the complex vectors annihilating the anti-holomorphic functions. In the holomorphic coordinates, TCN consists of the complex vectors annihilating the holomorphic functions. In coordinates, also relevant are the characteristic annihilators from the Dolbo complex. Omega CNE equals CN. In coordinates, Omega CNE equals CN. In coordinates, the exterior products of these are denoted by the self evident notation Omega, and the Dolbo operator and its complex conjugate map between these spaces via furthermore. There is a decomposition of the usual exterior derivative via real submanifolds of complex space. Let MCN be a real submanifold, defined locally as the locus of a system of smooth real valued functions F1 equals 0, F2 equals 0, Fk equals 0. Suppose that this system has maximal rank, in the sense that the differentials satisfy the following independence condition. Note that this condition is strictly stronger than needed to apply the implicit function theorem. In particular, M is a manifold of real dimension 2n minus k. We say that M is an embedded CR manifold of CR co-dimension k. In most applications, k equals 1, in which case the manifold is said to be of hypersurface type. 
Let L T C N M be the subundual of vectors annihilating all of the defining functions f1, fk. Note that, by the usual considerations for integrable distributions on hypersurfaces, L is involutive. Moreover, the independence condition implies that L is a bundle of constant rank n minus k. Henceforth, suppose that k equals 1, unless otherwise noted. The Levi form let M be a CR manifold of hypersurface type with single defining function f equals zero. The Levi form of M, named after Eugenio Elia Levi, is the Hermitian two form. This determines a metric on L. M is said to be strictly pseudoconvex if H is positive definite. Many of the analytic existence and uniqueness results in the theory of CR manifolds depend on the strict pseudo-convexity of the Levi form. This nomenclature comes from the study of pseudo-convex domains. M is the boundary of a pseudo-convex domain in CN if and only if it is pseudo-convex is a CR manifold. Abstract CR structures an abstract CR structure on a manifold M of dimension N consists of a subbundle L of the complexified tangent bundle which is formally integrable, in the sense that L, 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 which is linearly independent of its complex conjugate. The CR co-dimension of the CR structure is k equals n2 dim L. In case k equals 1, the CR structure is said to be of hypersurface type. Most examples of abstract CR structures are of hypersurface type, unless otherwise made explicit. The Levi form and pseudo-convexity suppose that M is a CR manifold of hypersurface type. The Levi form is the vector valued 2 form, defined on L, with values in the line bundle given by H defines a sesca linear form on L since it does not depend on how V and W are extended to sections of L, by the integrability condition. This form extends to a Hermitian form on the bundle by the same expression. The extended form is also sometimes referred to as the Levi form. The Levi form can alternatively be characterized in terms of duality. Consider the line subbundle of the complex cotangent bundle annihilating V for each local section alpha gamma. Let the form H alpha is a complex valued Hermitian form associated to alpha. Generalizations of the Levi form exist when the manifold is not of hypersurface type in which case the form no longer assumes values in a line bundle, but rather in a vector bundle. One may then speak, not of a Levi form, but of a collection of Levi forms for the structure. On abstract CR manifolds, of strongly pseudo-convex type, the Levi form gives rise to a pseudo-Hermitian metric. The metric is only defined for the holomorphic tangent vectors and so is degenerate. One can then define a connection and torsion and related curvature tenses for example the Ricci curvature and scalar curvature using this metric. This gives rise to an analogous C.R. Yamabe problem first studied by David Jerison and Jack Lee. The connection associated to C.R. manifolds was first defined and studied by Sidney M. Webster in his thesis on the study of the equivalence problem and independently also defined and studied by Tanaka. Accounts of these notions may be found in the articles. One of the basic questions of CR geometry is to ask when a smooth manifold endowed with an abstract CR structure can be realized as an embedded manifold in sum. Thus not only are we embedding the manifold, but we also demand for global embedding that the map embedding the abstract manifold in must pull back the induced CR structure of the embedded manifold so that the pullback CR structure exactly agrees with the abstract CR structure. Thus global embedding is a two-part condition. Here the question splits into two. One can ask for local embeddability or global embeddability. Global embeddability is always true for abstract e defined compact CR structures which are strongly pseudo-convex. That is the Levi form is positive definite when the real dimension of the manifold is 5 or higher by a result of Lewis Bautet de Monvel. In dimension 3, there are obstructions to global embeddability. 
This is sometimes called the Rossi example. The example in fact goes back to Hans Grauert and also appears in a paper by Aldo Andriotti and Yum Tongsu. A result of Joseph J. Cohn states that global embeddability is equivalent to the condition that the Cohn Laplacian have closed range. This condition of closed range is not a CR invariant condition. In dimension 3, a non-perturbative set of conditions that a CR invariant has been found by Sagun Chanilo, Hung Lin Chu and Paul C. Yang that guarantees global embeddability for abstract strongly pseudo-convex CR structures defined on compact manifolds. Under the hypothesis that the CR Panites operator is non-negative and the CR Yama B constant is positive, one has global embedding. The second condition can be weakened to a non-CR invariant condition by demanding the Webster curvature of the abstract manifold be bounded below by a positive constant. It allows the authors to get a sharp lower bound on the first positive eigenvalue of Cohn's Laplacian. The lower bound is the analog in CR geometry of the Andrei Liknarevich bound for the first positive eigenvalue of the Laplace Beltrami operator for compact manifolds in Riemannian geometry. Non negativity of the CR Panites operator in dimension 3 is a CR invariant condition as follows by the conformal covariant properties of the CR Panites operator first observed by Kenga Hirachi. The CR version of the Panites operator first appears in a work of C. Robin Graham and Jack Lee. The operator is not conformally covariant in real dimension 5 and higher, but only in real dimension 3. It is always a non-negative operator in real dimension 5 and higher. One can ask if all compactly embedded CR manifolds in have non-negative Panites operators. This is a sort of converse question to the embedding theorems discussed above. In this direction Jeffrey Case, Sagan Chanilo and Paul C. Yang have proved a stability theorem. That is, if one starts with a family of compact CR manifolds embedded in, and the CR structure of the family changes in a real analytic way, and the CR Yama B constant is uniformly bounded below by a positive constant for the family. Then the CR Panites operator remains non-negative for the entire family, provided one member of the family has its CR Panites operator non-negative. There are also results of global embedding for small perturbations of the standard CR structure for the three-dimensional sphere due to Daniel Burns and Charles Epstein. These results hypothesize assumptions on the Fourier coefficients of the perturbation term. The realization of the abstract CR manifold as a smooth manifold in sum will bound a complex variety which in general may have singularities. This is the content of the complex plateau problem studied in the article by F. Rhys Harvey and H. Blaine Lawson. There is also further work on the complex plateau problem by Stephen S. T. Yo. Local embedding of abstract CR structures is not true in real dimension 3 because of an example of Lewis Nirenberg. The example of L. Nirenberg may be viewed as a smooth perturbation of the non-solvable complex vector field of Hans Louis. One can start with the anti-holomorphic vector field on the Heisenberg group given by the vector field defined above has two linearly independent first integrals. That is there are two solutions to the homogeneous equation. Since we are in real dimension 3 the formal integrability condition is simply, which is automatic. Notice the Levi form is strictly positive definite as a simple calculation gives, where the holomorphic vector field L is given by. The first integrals which are linearly independent allow us to realize the CR structure as a graphing given by the CR structure or then is seen to be nothing but the restriction of the complex structure of to the graph. Nirenberg constructs a single, non-vanishing complex vector field P, defined in a neighborhood of the origin in. He then shows that if, then U has to be a constant. Thus the vector field P has no first integrals. The vector field P is created from the anti-holomorphic vector field for the Heisenberg group displayed above by perturbing it by a smooth, 
complex valued function as displayed below. Thus this new vector field P has no first integrals other than constants and so it is not possible to realize this perturbed CR structure in any way as a graph in any. The work of L. Nirenberg has been extended to a generic result by Howard Jacobowitz and Francois Treves. In real dimension 9 and higher, local embedding of abstract CR structures is true by the work of Masate Karanishian in real dimension 7 by the work of Akahori. A simplified presentation of Karanishi's proof is due to Webster. The problem of local embedding remains open in real dimension 5. Characteristic ideals The tangential Cauchy Riemann complex First of all, one needs to define a co boundary operator. For CR manifolds that arise as boundaries of complex manifolds, one may view this operator as the restriction of from the interior to the boundary. The subscript B is to remind one that we are on the boundary. The co-boundary operator takes forms to forms. One can even define the co-boundary operator for an abstract CR manifold even if it is not the boundary of a complex variety. This can be done using the Webster connection. The co-boundary operator forms a complex, that is, this complex is called the tangential cauchy riemann complex or the cohn rossi complex. Investigation of this complex and the study of the cohomology groups of this complex was done in a fundamental paper by Joseph J. Cohn and Hugo Rossi. Associated to the tangential CR complex is a fundamental object in CR geometry and several complex variables, the Cohn Laplacian. It is defined as here denotes the formal adjoint of with respect to where the volume form may be derived from a contact form which is associated to the CR structure. See for example the paper of J. M. Lee in the American J, referred below. Note the cone Laplacian takes forms to forms. Functions that are annihilated by the cone Laplacian are called CR functions. They are the boundary analogues of holomorphic functions. The real parts of the CR functions are called the CR pluriharmonic functions. The cone Laplacian is a non-negative, formally self-adjoint operator. It is degenerate and has a characteristic set where its symbol vanishes. On a compact, strongly pseudo-convex abstract CR manifold, it has discrete positive eigenvalues which go to infinity and also approach zero. The kernel consists of the CR functions and so is infinite dimensional. If the positive eigenvalues of the cone Laplacian are bounded below by a positive constant, then the cone Laplacian has closed range and conversely. Thus for embedded CR structures using the result of cone stated above, we conclude that the compact CR structure that is strongly pseudo-convex is embedded if and only if the cone Laplacian has positive eigenvalues that are bounded below by a positive constant. The cone Laplacian always has the eigenvalue 0 corresponding to the CR functions. Estimates for and have been obtained in various function spaces in various settings. These estimates are easiest to derive when the manifold is strongly pseudo-convex, for then one can replace the manifold by osculating it to a high enough order with the Heisenberg group, then using the group property and attendant convolution structure of the Heisenberg group. One can write down inverses, parametrices or relative parametrices too. A concrete example of the operator can be provided on the Heisenberg group. Consider the general Heisenberg group and consider the anti-holomorphic vector fields which are also group left invariant. Then for a function u we have the form since vanishes on functions. We also have the following formula for the cone Laplacian for functions on the Heisenberg group. Where are the group left invariant holomorphic vector fields on the Heisenberg group? The expression for the cone Laplacian above can be rewritten as follows. First it is easily checked that thus we have by an elementary calculation. The first operator on the right is a real operator and in fact it is the real part of the cone Laplacian. It is called the sub-Laplacian. It is a primary example of what is called a Hormand de sums of squares operator. It is obviously non-negative as can be seen via an integration by parts. 
Some authors define the subliplation with an opposite sign. In our case we have specifically, where the symbol is the traditional symbol for the subliplation. Thus examples. The canonical example of a CR manifold is the real sphere as a sub-manifold if the bundle described above is given by where is the bundle of holomorphic vectors. The real form of this is given by the bundle given at a point concretely in terms of the complex structure on by and the almost complex structure on is just the restriction of the sphere is an example of a CR manifold with constant positive Webster curvature and having zero Webster torsion. The Heisenberg group is an example of a CR manifold with zero Webster torsion and zero Webster curvature. The unit circle bundle over compact Riemann surfaces with genus strictly greater than 1 also provides examples of CR manifolds which are strongly pseudo-convex and have zero Webster torsion and constant negative Webster curvature. These spaces can be used as comparison spaces in studying geodesics and volume comparison theorems on CR manifolds with zero Webster torsion akin to the HE. Rauch comparison theorem in Riemannian geometry. In recent years, other aspects of analysis on the Heisenberg group have been also studied, like minimal surfaces in the Heisenberg group, the Bernstein problem in the Heisenberg group and curvature flows.